19 Nocturne Boulevard. Nocturne Boulevard? Not far. When you hit Howard, hang a right. Howard meets Philip at a weird kind of angle. Then you cross James and Paul. You can't miss Nocturne. It's just past the automatic. 19 Nocturne Boulevard. Your address for suspenseful stories of the speculative, strange, and supernatural. Tonight's episode is At the Sound of the Beep. This episode contains mature language and themes and a trigger warning. Yes? This is 19 Nocturne Boulevard. Won't you step inside? Did you have any trouble finding it? What do you mean, what kind of a place is it? Why, it's a woman's apartment, sometime in the 1980s. Can't you tell? Hey, all you late night sleepers, this is K-Knock, K-N-O-C, FM, keeping you up all night with another hour-long knock block of easy music. Hi, this is Lisa. Please be aware that anything you say on this line is being recorded and retained to be handed over to the police. So don't say a damn thing you don't want them to hear. Got it? Lise, it's not that bad, is it? Don't you think you're kind of inviting trouble, huh? Look, I, I don't mean to denigrate your peril or anything, but but really, I think it's pretty much over. But But if it's not, you should just come stay with me for the duration. Think about it anyway. Please. We can take off to the cabin. Ciao. You wanna play cops? Oh, I have some handcuffs, baby. And I know how to use... Hey, kid. I got all the info for you on changing your number. I know, you got like 500 business cards left and it's a huge waste and all, but what good's a business phone when you can't even use your own number no more? <laughs> that message? Yeah, that's gonna make them line up to hire you. Please. You know I only say this because I care, right? Hi. What sort of things can we talk about? Can we talk about shoes? Hi, Ms. Hudson. I'm so sorry to hear about everything. Everyone in the office, even J.D., believe it or not, is hoping you'll be up and running, I mean, up and around, real soon. For the time being, though, we've arranged to have paperwork sent round by messenger each morning, since you said you were hoping to keep up. Call me directly, would you, if it turns out you can't take so much? You're one of the fastest editors we have, but we all know how stress and medication can have an effect on productivity. Anyway, get well soon. Miss Hudson, this is Tasty Tales Magazine. And we've looked into your complaint, but unfortunately, since we have no way to verify every ad that's submitted... Note to self, I, I might have seen the guy just now. I, I got the feeling he was following me. Anyway, big guy, dark hair, and shades covering about half his face. One of those mustaches that look great on Burt Reynolds and terrible on anyone else. Well, except Matt Houston. He can pull it off, too. You told your boss you have a broken leg? What are you trying to do? Get yourself fired or what? What if they ask you for doctor's bills? Did you even think about that? Seriously, Lise, you're starting to worry me. I need to see you, and soon. Even if you have to hide out from everyone else in the world, you know that I'm here for you. Don't you? This is, uh, Officer Jenkins for Ms. Lisa Hudson. Uh, please call me at your earliest convenience. Uh, I can be reached through the switchboard at the precinct house. Please, call. You... are you serious? But your ad said that you were in the dirty phone call. Hi, Miss, um, Hudson. I'm hoping to reach you. You express an interest in some storm windows. Please call me at... Lisa, are you there? Pick up. Yes? Jeez, Lise. You sound like hell. How's that leg? Don't you start. You ready to change your number? I... Uh, I don't think it'll help. What? Why not? I... I, I, I can't explain. He'll just... <gasps> hey, he who? I thought this was a... 
heavy breather thing. Uh, I'm sorry, Sheila. I'm a complete nervous wreck. I have to go. At least let me come over. Bring you some groceries or something. Hello, Lisa? Hey, Lise. So sorry I hadn't gotten back to you sooner. I hope you weren't too worried. I've been out of town on business. You know how it goes. Mm, I can't wait to see you. How about Friday night? Same place? Wear the red dress hot stuff. <laughs> I hate these effing machines. You better freaking be there when I call back, bitch. I'm... I'm really sorry I, like, got you all upset, Lisa. I just want to help. You know that. Just tell me what you need, okay? I'm responding to a call from uh, Miss Hudson. This is the office of Dr. Kramer, and we can set an appointment for you as soon as this Friday. Please call back as appointments fill up very... Miss Hudson, Lisa, I hope you're not having any trouble with the workload. The delivery man yesterday said you didn't have anything to send back to us at the office, which makes us all a little worried. Please, just update us. We certainly didn't mean to overtax you. You have plenty of sick leave saved up. Just let us know, all right? You have been chosen to win an all-expense-paid... This is Officer Jenkins again, Miss Hudson. Uh, I, I don't want to alarm you, and I hesitate to leave a message on your machine about something so very serious, but I feel the necessity outweighs any need for discretion. Shit. Necessity outweighs any need for discretion, Case. Um, the man you mentioned, he's dangerous. Uh, I need to meet with you as soon as possible. My direct number is... Um, hello. Yes, I'm calling for the... Sexy phone call? Awesome. In case you're wondering, that's the T, and I am over 18. I mean, 21. Hello? That guy, the one you were worried about? I think I might have seen him. Didn't you say he was real tall and thin? Call me, damn it. Lisa? Miss Hudson, this is like Missy at like the video store. Your, like, videotapes are, um, like, totally overdue. Can you, like, give me a call and, like, let me know, like, when you plan to, like, get them back? That'd be totally rad, because, like, the overdue fines now is, like, way quick. Lisa, I'm coming over now. I'm glad you're not picking up, since I'm not going to let you argue your way out of this. I don't care what this guy is doing. It's not going to be any better for you to sit alone in your damn apartment moping than it is to... Um, I heard your voice, but... Lisa, I've been worried sick about you. I'm okay. <sighs> Don't come over, though. So I'm watching the place. I don't want him to connect me to you. I'm worried about what he might do. I can take care of myself. Policemen say that this guy might have done this before. Why isn't he picking this dildo up then? Ben, there? this guy hasn't done anything they can prove. Yet. Technically, they don't even know who bought the ad. <laughs> and technically, it's a cruel prank. Nothing actionable. This douchebag gave out your home phone number. Allegedly. Yeah, they use that word a lot. Okay, look, if you're so worried, I'll get out tomorrow afternoon. I don't think he's around then. I think he works and... Listen to yourself, Lisa. Usually not around? The guy just hangs around outside your apartment and no one can find any reason to arrest him? What the hell kind of cops are they? Careful ones. I'm going back to sleep. Good night, Ben. Miss Hudson, this is Dr. Kramer's office. You missed your appointment, and we're going to need $20 for the non-cancellation fee, as stated in the patient agreement you signed. Please forward that as soon as possible. Miss Hudson, this is Stacy Tails again. It doesn't matter how many times you call. We still can't give you any information on the place or the ad. If you can convince the police to provide us with legal cause, we can release the information to a subpoena. Lisa, honey. Are you still talking to Ben? I thought it was all over between the two of you. I'm... I'm hurt. Why go behind my back that way? Do I need to prove how much I love you? I'll do it. Whatever you want. Just say the word, and your wish is my command. You don't need old Ben for anything. Trust me. There's no reason that he should be in the middle of this. Miss Hudson, I got your message. Um... Well, from the sound of it, there was no overt threat made. No threat? No threat? I'm really sorry. 
I understand what kind of position this puts you in, but he's being very careful not to do anything that's actionable. Particularly not when he's being recorded. From what I've been able to find, he's had some experience with this in the past. He practically said he was going to do something to Ben. Pra practically doesn't cut it. I'm very sorry. Have you considered buying a dog? Uh, pit bulls are very... You disgusting Jezebel! Harlot! How dare you, luring men from the path of righteousness this way, tempting them? I really didn't expect to get through. Well, you've reached Dr. Lillian. Turn down your radio and tell the world what your problem is. Oh, um, okay, uh, so first, this is where I guess I should say I, I really love your show. Most people do. Except I don't. Don't what? I mean, uh... I, I've never actually listened before. It's just that I'm kind of desperate. Isn't everyone? I uh, really didn't mean, mean to be rude. Sorry. Go ahead. Get on with it. But I haven't slept well in weeks. That's why the Dr. Lillian show is on all night. For all you insomniacs and night owls who need to unload, Dr. Lillian is on the line. And they all want to hear what you have to say, Lisa. Uh, this guy has been following me. How flattering. No, it's it's horrible. Why? Is he ugly? I think he plans to kill me. Don't you think you're being a little paranoid, Lisa? He's always there, lurking around every corner. He calls up and thinks... thinks... He thinks? Well, that's different. He seems to think we're dating. You must have done something to give him that impression. No. Are you sure? Perhaps it's something about how you dress. Men are very visual, and if you stimulate them too much... Shut up. What? Shut up. How can you say things like that? You're a woman, too. But I know how to act like a lady. Next caller. <laughs> Bitch! I want you to call me Uncle Happy. You'd like that, wouldn't you? I'm so sorry to hear about your father, Lisa. This seems to be a particularly unlucky month for you. I've put through the paperwork, and there will be no problem with taking time off for your... My father? Oh, you're there. We're all really sorry to hear about your... My father's... His passing. I'm sure that on top of your leg, this is a doubly difficult time for you. How, how did you hear about it? Well, the letter you sent. How else? The letter? Lise, you there? I just got your message, but it didn't make much sense. You said your father died? I think I must have misunderstood. Please, call. <laughs> Lisa, my poor dear. I heard about your father passing, and I... Leave me alone! You wrote that letter to my office! My father isn't dead! But he could be. <gasps> Any time now. <gasps> you need some time off from work anyway. To relax. See you soon, sweetheart. <laughs> Hi. This is Herb Johnson of the 8th Municipal District. And I am running on a platform of integrity and honesty with the strong backing of the law enforcement community. Ms. Hudson, uh, in light of new developments, it has been decided that this harassment has reached a point where we might be able to take limited action. We will send an official desist notice to the person in question with uh, the threat of fine and imprisonment if the calls continue beyond another 90 days. Uh, I hope this will give you some relief. Ms. Hudson, this is Dr. Kramer. Following up on the message you left on my machine, I think I need to see you. You seem to be suffering from a distinct persecution complex, and we need to get to the root of it as quickly as possible before it begins to damage other aspects of your life. So hey, Miss Hudson, this is like Missy at like the video store. You have never got back to me, and your bids are like way late. 
They like want to make you like buy the tapes and like charge your credit card, but the one you left on file like won't go through, okay? So don't like wait until this like goes to collections or nothing. It would be like way dumb to get sued over like some stupid VHS tapes as if. Do you have time to take a short survey? Oh yeah, yeah, baby. I know you're listening. <laughs> Wanna guess what I'm wearing? <laughs> Lisa, did you hear about Ben? Please pick up. You really need to hear this from a friend. Lise? Um, Miss Hudson? Uh, we, we regret to inform you that your fiancé, Ben Mandeville, was killed today in a hit-and-run incident. Uh, the perpetrator is as yet unidentified. If you could arrange a time for an officer to call on you for... Greetings, Miss Hudson. This is your credit card provider. We understand that your card is overdrawn by a fairly substantial amount and would like to speak with you about the possibility of payment. Miss Hudson, this is Harry from Tasty Tales Magazine, and I have that address you've been looking for. Call me back at... Talk nasty. I want to hear some sex talk. Yeah. Sorry about Ben, huh? But I know he was harassing you, and I couldn't think of any other way to protect you. We're much better off without him under our feet anyway. Love ya. I received your message, and uh, we're actively investigating the address you passed along. This might be over soon. I'm... I'm very sorry, uh, about your fiance. Hey, sweet cheeks. Had to call and let you know that the police paid me a very inconvenient visit. I'll have to return the favor. Hey, I get... Yeah, you get one phone call, bub, but it doesn't mean you can take all friggin' day. Did you get your locks changed the way I said you should? Got a new key for me, Lisa Lee, just in case of emergency. I know, it sounds weird to ask, what with all that's going on, but, well, I worry that there will, um, you know, be a real emergency. Um, just tell me what I can do, Lisa. I want to help so badly. They cut me loose, Lise. Lack of evidence, I guess. How nice. Ooh, I like your friend Sheila's voice. She's got spunk. We'll have to have her over sometime, don't you think? Huh? Got a new key for me, Lisa Lee. Just in case of emergency. See you soon. Oh, man. You have such a freaking hot voice, Lisa. Come on. Ask me what oh, I'm doing. Uh, the, the ad said this was free, right? Hello? Tapping your phone? That would require a level of... I'm recording this. Why is that? I'm sick and tired of you scoffing at me. I haven't... Or telling me that it's going to be alright, because you're not the one living in the middle of Perv Central with the big bad wolf at the door. My hands are tied. So you can't do anything about this until my hands are tied? What the hell is your problem? I'm bound by the law. The law needs changing. No matter what the law is, there will be people who find the loopholes and spoil it for the rest of us. Like public restrooms. Excuse me? If everyone could be trusted to leave a bathroom as clean as when they went in, every place would have a public restroom. All it takes is one jackass who can't aim, or someone who walks off with a toilet tissue, and suddenly we're all searching for somewhere to pee. What about Ben? It was a hit and run. The chance of ever finding, much less proving... God damn it. What do I need, a gun? No, of course not. Since if I shoot anyone, even someone attacking me, I'll be arrested. What kind of goddamn justice is that? The only justice we have. Oh, baby, talk that nasty talk at me. Lisa, dear, this is Wilma from work, and I'm not supposed to be saying this, but they're talking about getting in a replacement. Just temporary, but you know how it is. You need to talk to Mr. Brown, and real soon. Miss Hudson, this is Officer Nolan. 
I believe we've spoken before. I have some information you might find handy, but I can't leave it on the machine. Miss Hudson, you really need to reply to the official collection notice sent by the Happy Time Video Club. Please. It's not that bad, is it? I think it's pretty much over. We can take off to the cabin. Ciao. Who the hell is this? Lisa, I'm coming over now. <laughs> Greetings, registered voter. I want you to know that I, Fred Smith, promise to make the streets more safe, particularly for single women, if I am allowed in. <laughs> Into office, that is. I want to protect you. Make me your choice. Lisa. Lisa. Look, I'm going to be there tomorrow, and I'll drag you out kicking and screaming if I have to. But you are not staying cooped up there anymore. Seriously, this is not healthy. We'll find someplace safe, even if we have to buy a freaking boat or something. Lisa? Miss, I saw your ad. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Can, can talk about that <laughs> I mean oh open up and and, and and let him in Miss Hudson this is Mr. Franklin of Franklin's fittings just confirming that we'll be out on Saturday to fit your windows with the bars that you selected we should be at your residence between noon and five Miss Hudson this is Franklin's fittings my clerk says you called and cancelled your appointment I just wanted to double check, particularly since you wrote down a completely different number on the cancellation notice. And frankly, I can't read it. Sorry if this is the wrong place to reach you. Miss Hudson, I hope your health is better. Um, this is Phil from from personnel. Uh, uh, there, there's no easy way to do this, and, and I really hate having to do this on your answering machine, but you haven't been reachable by mail and haven't answered the door to a messenger in days. Uh, there's no easy way. Uh, I already said that, didn't I? Anyway, Miss Hudson, we're going to have to replace you at the office. Uh, but when you're back on your feet, please feel free to contact us and we'll get all the details straightened away. Uh... The lawyers told me we have no limit on the time, but anyway, um, have a nice day. Please, don't you invite trouble, huh? So you're starting to worry me. I need you, and soon. Please? Hello? Miss Hudson, uh, Officer Jenkins again? I might have some information for you. I'll be in the neighborhood this evening and would like to speak with you. Uh, please call me back. I know you have my number. This is Officer Nolan. Officer Jenkins has been pulled off this case for a real emergency. You'll be dealing with me from now on. Call me at 5 I know where you live, bitch. Girls like you are just asking to get everything we can give you. I'm going to climb right up your fire escape, break in the window with that ugly curtain, and shoot your boyfriend. Then, while he bleeds out on the floor, I'm going to... I, I, I give up. When someone finds my dead body, or if, if you, you don't find me at all, I hope someone listens to this. I keep seeing him everywhere. At this door outside the phone booth. I, mean, I can never get away, but, but I have his voice right here on this machine. I hope that the police will find this and finally, finally take some notice.
I forced myself to leave the house today and, and went out to buy a gun, but I, I don't have any money left and I, I can't go near Sheila's house anymore or any of my other friends because he'll see them and, and might go after them. <laughs> way he went after Ben. <laughs> and there's nothing left. N nothing! Welcome home, darling. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa, are you there? Hmm, a guest. Now that you know how to find us, don't be a stranger. We have enough of those already. Tonight's episode, At the Sound of the Beep, was written and produced by Julie Hoverson. In it, Lisa was Tanya Maloyevich of Lightning Bolt Theater of the Mind, Raymond was Jack Kincaid of Edict Zero, Ben was Lothar Tuppen, Sheila was Melissa Bartell, Officer Jenkins was Rich Matheson of Keeg's Quest. Wilma was Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard of Gypsy Audio. Bob at Tasty Tales Magazine was Rick Lewis. Missy from the Video Store was Melissa Pang. Dr. Lillian was Julie Hoverson. Dr. Kramer was Glenn Hallstrom, and his receptionist was Chris Kepler. Phil at the office was Mark Olson. Additional voices included A.J. Clarkson, of Blackburn Gaslight Adventures, Brian Lomatuama, Carl Cubbage, Carrie Ayers, Dillo, Henry Marks, James Sedgwick of Scattered Sounds Productions, Jeff Harris, Kevin Tremblay of Brown Monkey, Matthias Rebney Morgan, Rachel Rumler of Strange Paradise, Robert Cudmore of Yap Audio, Shane McGovern, Thomas Rippert, Tim Prazel. Music for this episode was from the album Atmospheres by Fabio Santangelo and was found on Gemendo, and is used under a Creative Commons license. Cover art was by Julie Hoverson. Sound and mastering was done by Julie Hoverson. Opening theme was by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. The opening credits featured Cole Hornaday, Renaud LaBeouf, and Julie Hoverson. Sound effects may have come from SoundSnap.com, Sonomic.com, StockMusic.com, OneSoundFX.com, SoundEffectsForFree.com, and through the footage firm and Blastwave FX. Any other effects are used under a royalty-free license. All persons, places, and events in the story were fictitious or used in a fictitious manner and are not meant to reflect any persons, places, or things living, dead, or undead. Questions? Comments? We would love to hear from you. Contact us at 19NocturnAtLive.com Check out our website at www.19nocturneboulevard.com and like us on Facebook. We actually reply. This presentation, as well as the scripts and characters therein, is copyright 2013 to Julie Hoverson and Reality Productions and is released under a Creative Commons 3.0 Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. Spread the show around, but don't try to make money off it. This is Julie. 
I didn't feel this was an appropriate episode to have outtakes at the end of, so instead I want to include some resources. If you or anyone you know is suffering any form of stalking or abuse, there are places to look. There's www.rain.org, that's rain, R-A-I, with two N's, N-N, R-A-I-N-N. There's abusedwomen.org, and womenshealth.gov. Look for the topic, Violence Against Women, and it includes resources by state. Thank you.